Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about the break statement, but before we get into anything, I just wanted to say a couple of things up front. If you're pretty new to programming, I would recommend you get a little bit of experience in some other programming languages. That way you just kind of broaden the, the skill set you have and you get a better picture of programming. So, if you're looking for a programming language to learn and you don't wanna to have to learn a ton of new information, you might wanna try C Sharp. Why do I say this exactly? Well, because Java and C Sharp are so similar, you can pretty much learn them together. So for example, take a look at this program. We have the static void main, we have two while loops, and we get this cool peer, or triangle output. Well, here's the same exact program inside of C Sharp. Take a look. Almost everything is exactly the same. Yeah, the curly braces are in different spots. We don't have a public behind this static void main, but other than that, you're going to have a pretty much similar program, very easy to learn both at the same time. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you're interested in learning C Sharp, I do have series that go along with this series, but instead of Java, the code is in C Sharp. So check that out on my channel if you're interested in that. And besides that, the only other thing I need to share with you guys is the sponsor. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Okay, so what are we talking about today? The break keyword. So what is the purpose of the break keyword? Well, it's actually going to break out of a loop when the keyword is hit. So right now we have these nested while loops, and then we also have the nested for loops down here. Personally, I prefer the nested for loops. So I'm actually going to go back to that just because it allows us to really focus on the break keyword rather than all that other junk floating around. So let's get rid of these comments, and now let's run the program just to make sure everything is good. And it seems to be working. Now, if there's a certain situation where maybe we're searching through something, or we need to break out of the loop, we literally just use the keyword break. So oftentimes that is going to be inside of an if statement, so when a certain condition is met. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we want to output the value of k, but once we hit a certain value, we want to break. So we'll say if, and let's just say if k is equal to, let's go with like six, then we just say break. Now running this, watch what happens. The first iteration we get nine, eight, seven, and then it stops when it hits six, and it jumps outside of this for loop, prints that new line, and then it goes to the next iteration of this for loop. Next one, it goes eight, seven, and it still doesn't print six, and it's going to do that for the whole thing. This line, we don't have any output because the first character was six. So it just breaks out of it and goes to the next iteration of the outer for loop. So that is how the break keyword works. It's only going to break out of the inner loop. So if you're in a nested loop, it's going to just continue to the next iteration of that outer loop. We could also put one in the outer loop if we wanted. So for example, what we'll do is we'll just say if I is equal to three, what are we gonna do? We're going to break. So what is this gonna do? It's going to break out of that outer loop once i is equal to three. Give it a run, and you can see we do all of the output. So this loop is executed, and then we get to this if statement, and it breaks out of it. If you wanted to stop before it outputs this, then you can move this up above the for loop like so. Then just format a little bit. Oh, right there. All right, so now when we run the thing, you can see it doesn't give that output. 